Hello and welcome to this video in which I address the issue of negative variance estimates in confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this interests you, please subscribe to this channel. Also check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about an issue that is puzzling to many people who apply factor analysis and structural equation modeling, and that is the issue of negative variance estimates. This is something that many people encounter and a lot of people are really confused about this and they don't know what to do, they don't know why this happens, what it means and how they can fix it. And so I want to address some of these questions here on this in this video. I also have additional videos on Haywood cases, negative variances on this channel that you can check out as well. In fact, I have a whole playlist on improper solutions, so you might find more information there as well. So what is this about? So you might, when you apply a factor model or a structural equation model, get this kind of ugly message in your software, in this case M+, where M+, says, warning, the residual covariance matrix theta is not positive definite. This could indicate a negative variance or residual variance for an observed variable, or it could indicate a correlation greater or equal to one between two observed variables or a linear dependency. and the results should be checked in the estimates section and the problem here involves variable labeled y1 and then as you scroll through your output further and you take a look at the parameter estimates then you might see something like this where in the estimate column under residual variances you have a negative estimate for y1 here so in this case so say this is exactly what happened that there was a negative residual or error variance estimate and this is probably the most common situation when you get a warning message like this is that there's a negative error variance so what does this mean so this means first of all something went wrong obviously right because negative variances don't make sense a variance could be zero if there are no differences between people so in the case of an error or residual variance this would mean that there was no unreliability so that the scores were perfectly reliable if the error variance was zero and that already is implausible for a factor model or a structural equation model because typically the variables that we observe we don't expect them to be perfectly reliable there will be some amount of error variance so if you have a zero error variance that's already suspicious but when the residual variance is negative then that is really suspicious because a negative variance doesn't make any sense how would you interpret that and we're not used to it from conventional statistical analyses when we apply for example a t-test or a regression analysis or an analysis of variance then no such thing can occur. This is something that is specific to structural equation modeling and factor analysis where we estimate latent parameters or parameters associated with latent variables. And so with latent variables, things get a little bit more complicated and negative variances can occur. And that has to do with the fact that models like this are not necessarily saturated. So models can be over identified in the context of factor analysis and structural equation modeling, which means that there are positive degrees of freedom, the data are not perfectly fit by the model. And so therefore, it's not necessarily the case that everything has to be 100% within the boundaries of um, the admissible value. So latent parameters can be um, out of bounds sometimes. So for example, variances, but also correlations. So latent correlations, sometimes we see that those go over one for um, in certain cases. And so that would then also be an improper estimate. Those can also happen for saturated structural equation models 
but it is common for this to happen when a model is not saturated, when it has positive degrees of freedom. And usually the reason for this, the most prominent reason for this to happen is when the model is misspecified. So this would be the primary reason is that something is wrong. So in this case, what was fit to these data here was a single factor model. Um, there were three indicators and the single factor model was not appropriate for the data. The variables were not unidimensional. They were correlated in a way that is not in line with a single for the assumption of a single factor unidimensional model and so therefore this negative error variance occurred so this can happen when a model is under specified when you have um, multi-dimensionality and you fit only a single factor or when the model is over specified also so sometimes we have too many factors in the model for example we might have substantive factors and method factors and then there might be an over uh, factorization of the data and over parameterization so the data may be over explained so to say and there's not so much variance in the indicators to explain and there are too many factors and then that can force uh, variance and, and error variance to jump into the negative direction so this is always the first thing that i think about when i encounter a negative error variance or a negative latent variance or residual variance, which can also happen, then my first thought is something is misspecified in the model. Maybe there are too many parameters in the model or the model as a whole is not correct, or maybe the model doesn't have enough parameters. So this is really something to first consider is the possibility for model misspecification. That's probably the most common reason why you see this, which is a good, thing or this is good news because this can be fixed potentially so you can modify your model you can come up with a more plausible model that may not show these problems also it might indicate that the indicator some of the indicators you may have to drop so maybe there's an indicator that doesn't fit onto your factor so to say it's because this indicator measures something else and so this can be also a sign that your measurement structure is not correct it's not unidimensional maybe for this factor or there's some other kind of measurement related problem which could mean that an indicator needs to be dropped now this is not necessarily the indicator with a negative error variance so be beware so don't necessarily drop just this indicator and think oh this is the solution it could be more complex than that but it may be a sign that there's inhomogeneity in your indicators for that given factor and you, that you might have to reconsider that factor model the factor structure and so one thing to do is then to take a look at the observed correlation structure for the variables that are supposed to load onto this factor and if you find that the correlations are very different for those indicators for example then this may be a sign that uh, unidimensional structure just doesn't fit it's not appropriate for these indicators and that you might have to switch out indicators or drop indicators for that factor as an example next is that you might have too few indicators per factor. So when you have only, when you have models with only two indicators per factor, then this problem can happen more frequently than when you have three or more indicators. So then that's a problem that hopefully can be addressed. So hopefully then you can find other indicators that you can uh, add to the model. If not, then you might have to revise your entire model structure. So say if you have only two indicators and that's the problem that causes this issue, then one solution might be to combine those two indicators into a single indicator and then use a single indicator model or use the sum score or aggregate score as a manifest variable in a path model if otherwise you are stuck with this type of problem. And then next is the sample size. So when you have a sample that is too small, then this problem also occurs more frequently due to problems with sampling error. So you might have um, random sampling error causing this issue. And of course, that this becomes more likely when the sample size is smaller. 
also when you have indicators that are very reliable. So when you have, let's say, reliabilities that are 0.95 or greater, then sampling error might cause the very small error variance component to be estimated outside of um, or below zero, so to say, due to sampling error. And of course, again, this is related to sample size, or this is more likely than to happen when you have a smaller sample. But then an issue could be, so to say, when the variables are very reliable, which is a good thing. So that's something that you definitely want. And then in that case, maybe it could also make sense to use the indicators directly without latent variables. If they are so reliable that there's hardly any measurement error, then perhaps using manifest scores instead of latent variables could be a solution. However, this is relatively rare. I think the problem of having high reliability is causing this problem. I think the most common thing to look for is model misspecification and perhaps sometimes it's good to get a second opinion, ask an expert to take a look at your model and data, your correlation structure, and then oftentimes this can be figured out in which way the model is too restrictive or is too heavily parameterized so that you end up with this problem. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about improper solution and the reasons for negative variance estimates in factor analysis and SEM. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.